In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an ultra tiny AI supercomputer from MSI known as the Exper Edge. This is actually powered by NVIDIA's DGX Spark platform, and this is something that I've been really wanting to get my hands on for a while. Basically, MSI and NVIDIA have created a supercomputer that you could throw in your backpack. It's got 128 gigabytes of unified RAM running at a 256-bit bus, and it's powered by NVIDIA's Grace Blackwell GPU architecture. Instead of using an x86 CPU like we see in laptops and desktops, this is actually using a 20-core ARM SoC from NVIDIA, so it's really interesting. So it's kind of fallen right in line with the NVIDIA Jetson Nano line, but when it comes to raw performance, I mean, this thing is leagues ahead. MSI has encased the DGX Spark inside of this nice, sleek, all-metal design chassis here. Very durable. Got a lot of ventilation up front here. And inside of the box, basically, what we're going to get here is the Expert Edge itself. We get a nice little quick start manual and a 280-watt power supply. It just happens to be using USB Type-C to power this unit up. When it comes to the overall design, like I mentioned, I mean, we've got an all metal chassis here and up front, we've got this nice little graded system just to allow some airflow through it because it does have a smart fan built in. And when it comes to IO, everything's going to be around back. And with this, we do get a dedicated power button. There's also four USB 3.2 ports and the one on the very end is really meant for power input, but the other three will do video out. So alt mode is supported here by all three of those. We've also got a full size HDMI port a 10 gigabit ethernet port, and they've also included ConnectX7 200 gig here. This is exactly how we'd connect two of these AI supercomputers together. You'd need a 200 gigabit cable directly connected to both of the units, but NVIDIA's made it really easy. Basically, you just plug them in, you don't need any extra switches or anything like that, and you're good to go. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs of the MSI Edge Expert, like I mentioned, this is powered by NVIDIA's Grace Blackwell GPU architecture. But when it comes to the CPU, we've actually got a 20-core ARM SoC, and it's configured in such a way we have 10 X925 cores and 10 A725 cores, 128 gigabytes of unified RAM running at a 256-bit bus, so the speed on that is around 273 gigabytes per second. This unit does support an NVMe SSD. You can go with one terabyte up to a four. It also has Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 built in. And for the operating system, it's NVIDIA's DGX OS, which is actually based on Ubuntu. We've seen this across their, you know, ARM-based mini supercomputer line, like from their Jetson Nanos. They use Ubuntu as a base and kind of modify it to work on their system. So it's not much different. And with this, we do have a lot of great resources built in also. After the initial setup, which is pretty easy, basically all you have to do is create a username and password. Get a few updates out of the way, it's going to look a little something like this. We've got a full-fledged Ubuntu desktop. It's a customized version of Ubuntu specifically for these uh, DGX devices. Very similar to what we see on the NVIDIA Jetson platform. And from here, I mean, if you want to go through, use this as a desktop, you definitely could. We've got software right here, so you don't even have to hit up terminal to install a few things. You want to get uh, some photo editing, video editing out of the way on this. It's got more than enough power, but of course, people aren't going to be buying this specifically for that. This is made for AI development, and NVIDIA has actually made it really easy to get started with this. From the DGX Spark resources going to open up a web page and you can start building on DGX Spark right now. At the top here, it's got some developer quick starts. So Visual Studio Code takes five minutes to set up. And just to give you an idea, it gives you a rundown on exactly how to set this up. So instructions on how to set up, you can copy and paste directly from here and have this up and running in five minutes flat. Open Web UI with Olama, Comfy UI, just some easy to set up things here. And when we move down, there's more advanced tutorials. So CUDA X Data Science right here, uh, connect two sparks together. I've already installed a few things like Comfy UI and Open Web UI. It was really simple to do from this section here. But uh, one thing we've got is the DGX dashboard. I've installed it, and basically it's going to open up a web page for us, and it'll give us a rundown on the stats of the unit. So we've got our system memory. Remember, with this, we've got 128 gigs of RAM. GPU utilization, and I have not found a way to add anything else like CPU utilization. Maybe that'll come down the road. Got some settings, more documentation on this. 
But to have this up and running, you know, while you're running some models is pretty handy just to show what kind of a uh, system load you're putting on the unit itself. And to get something like Open Web UI started here, since I've already installed it, uh, it's pretty simple to do. Control Alt T, it's going to open up Terminal. This uses a Docker container. We can stop it, we can start it. And since we're using Open Web UI, we'll need a browser. Basically, localhost. There's several different models that you can choose from. I went with the GPT OSS 20B, which is around a 21 billion parameter model here. So we're going to choose that. And unfortunately, I can't find how to load it right now. Can I load it up? As soon as I ask it a question, it'll automatically load. And we'll keep an eye over here. We've got 128 gigabytes of unified memory, almost 18 gigs being used. We'll just go ahead and ask it a question. And since this is the first time, it needs to load the model. You'll see this jump up significantly here. Still loading that model up. Now it's thinking. And it's going to give me a rundown on how lithium batteries are made. And I'll tell you, that was way more than enough information than I needed, but it gave me basically everything I needed to know, and it thought for three seconds. So that's the GPT OSS 20B. Again, you can go through, download Llama, you can do GPT. I believe we even have Gemma here. So will it show all? I'll have to pull the repository for the Gemma model. I've been using this on it super quick, in my opinion. And as everything was going, I mean, we saw that GPU utilization. Jumped right up there. Lots of RAM being used with this model also, but there's even larger models out there and we still have plenty of RAM to spare. I also set up Comfy UI and this is just a very simple uh, default workflow here. Uh, we can go 512 by 512. We'll do a batch size of let's do 10 here and uh, we'll just generate Godzilla. So it'll export over here. We'll go ahead and run it. And while we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at the usage. It'll do 10 of these, and you can see it's definitely pegging out that GPU. One thing I've been doing a lot with Comfy UI on my Windows machine is uh, DMD models. Basically, you can do it in like eight steps, super quick. And on something like an RTX 4090, I mean, it's almost instantaneous. That's something I'd like to set up on here to take a look at later on down the road. But yeah, I mean, Comfy UI, definitely working here. Not too bad. And I want to use a better model here. Just something, uh, just a bit bigger, a little more information. But the images come out pretty decent here. You could also do some image to video generation. Not exactly sure how well it would work out on this GPU. But either way you look at it, I mean, yeah, image generation, totally possible with this setup. I don't think a lot of people are going to be buying the Edge Expert for gaming, or more specifically emulation, but since we're here, I figured we'd test at least one emulator, and we're going with the higher-end one, which was really easy to get installed, RPCS3 for PS3 emulation. So I've got this set up, and uh, if we go to uh, Configure, GPU, you can see we've got that NVIDIA Tegra, NVIDIA GB10, so that's what we're using here with the Edge Expert. Blackwell, I'm going to go to 1080 here. We'll just click apply, we'll save, and we'll start up Skate 3. Just how fast it compiled the shaders. This has already been compiled, but, you know, reloading them does go pretty quickly. I've got the information we need right here, our PPU, SPU, RSX, and total, plus our FPS. And once we get into it here... Up in the top left-hand corner, you can see we're at 60, and it's a really smooth experience. Every once in a while, I do notice a little bit of a stutter. It's kind of a given with this. With what we've got here, given that this isn't optimized at all for a chip like this, still pretty impressive, and I could probably take the resolution up on this. I'm just at 1080 right now, but uh, it's not bad at all. Pretty surprising. Just first try here, I really haven't even gone through anything, haven't optimized anything. All I've done was actually take the resolution up with RPCS3. Since PS3 was running so well on this device, I figured I'd also test out some Xbox emulation with XEMU. We're running Forza Motorsports, this is the original game, and I do believe that we're locked at 30 FPS with this game, but I did take the resolution up to 1080p. And uh, again, just like PS3, I think we could get a little more out of this with that, uh, you know, higher-end GPU we have here. 
In my next video, we will be testing out some more emulation, and hopefully I can get some PC game emulation up and running on this also. Uh, if not, we could definitely try to run some native Linux games. I've been trying to get Steam installed on this, having a few issues, it might take a couple days. But yeah, keep an eye out on the channel because I will have at least one more video coming up with gaming on this thing. When it comes down to it, I do think that this is a great platform for AI developers, and it's definitely not a consumer product. It's not something that you pick up and turn into a mini PC, albeit you definitely could if you wanted to. The main things this has going for it versus, let's say, the RTX 5090 and an x86 setup is 128 gigabytes of RAM that the GPU can also access. With something like the RTX 5090, you've got 32 gigs of RAM there, and for most models out there, yeah, you could get by with that, but when you're looking to develop, tweak, and tune models, you definitely need that extra VRAM to load those models in real time. So I will have another video coming. I definitely want to test out some gaming on this. Again, it's not specifically designed for gaming, but since we've got a full-blown Linux operating system, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get something else working on it. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit that like button and think about subscribing. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look at the MSI Expert Edge. If you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave some links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.